From Aya Sophia, we walk along a few yards to Top Karpi Palace. Through this, the Imperial Gateway, we enter the outer, or first, courtyard, which was also called the Court of the Janissaries or Parade Court. As we proceed further towards the heart of the palace grounds, we shall enter several further courtyards, entrance to which was increasingly restricted until we reach the fourth courtyard, which was the Sultan's private courtyard. There are some nice views of the Bosphorus and Golden Horn from up here. In this outer courtyard we see the Church of Hire Irene, meaning Holy Priest. It was commissioned by Constantine in the 4th century. I understand that the first Council of Constantinople was held here in 381 AD. After the Ottoman conquest of 1453, Sultan Mehmed set up his residence in the old Byzantine palace, quite near here. But like much of Constantinople, after the damage caused by the Fourth Crusade, this palace was in a state of ruination. So in about 1459, the Sultan ordered the building of this palace complex. And we are here, waiting to enter the second courtyard, through the gate of salutation. If you were a visitor, however important, you had to dismount from your horse here. Only the Sultan was allowed to enter on horseback. In any case, only people on official business and important foreign dignitaries were allowed into the second courtyard. In this courtyard, we can see, all along this side, a range of kitchens, which prepared food for the 4,000 and more people who lived in this complex. If we now look to our left, in the top corner, we see these buildings. In front of the Tower of Justice. These three chambers are the Imperial Council Hall, the Scribes Room and the Room of the Grand Vizier. Seen here, holding an audience, in 1724. Over the years, the governance of the empire gradually passed from the Sultan into the hands of the Grand Vizier, and eventually moved across the street to the Sublime Port, which we saw earlier. So let's now move across to the Gate of Felicity and go into the third courtyard. The third courtyard comprises the private and residential areas of the palace. Even the Grand Vizier was only granted authorization on specified days and under specified conditions. We can first see the throne room, straight ahead. Other buildings in this courtyard house treasures of various sorts. You can look at a collection of jewelry, uniforms and state dresses and a special collection of some of the most sacred objects of Islam. I am sorry, but I didn't spend much time in these buildings. You have to visit Top Karpi if you visit Istanbul. It was interesting to see it and try to imagine it as it was when the Sultan lived here. But it just didn't grip me. So let's just go down this passageway here, and have a look at some of the buildings in this area. We also get some more good views of the water. That building is now a restaurant. Top Karpi was the residence of the Sultan from soon after the conquest of 1453. In 1856, the Sultan was Abdul Messid I, and he moved the residence and court to the newly built Dorma Bashe Palace on the Bosphorus, which we saw the other day, whilst on the Bosphorus cruise. Even before this move, the Sultans would often spend time in one of their other palaces on the Bosphorus. But in 1856, the court was moved out permanently, though functions, including the Imperial Treasury, the Library, and the Mint, were retained at Top Karpi. In 1924, the government of the New Republic instructed that it become a museum, under the administration of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. In 1985, it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site.
So we've now seen parts of the Sultan's most private area, and bits of the garden. We now go up these stairs, to the sunny terrace up there. Here are some quite gaudy, I hope that's the right word, little kiosks and pavilions. Let's now have a look at the Baghdad Pavilion. This was built to commemorate the Baghdad Campaign of around 1638. The Baghdad Campaign was part of the war fought against the Persians in which Baghdad and Mesopotamia were recaptured for the Ottoman Empire. With its tiles, dating to the 17th century, mother of pearl, tortoise shell cupboard, and window panels, this pavilion is one of the last examples of the classic palace architecture. From the mid-18th century onwards, the building was used as the library of the privy chamber. And from here, we can see along the Golden Horn. We are nearing the end of our visit to Top Carpi. There are several other pavilions up here, which are similar in many ways to the Baghdad Pavilion. Just to name two of them, we have the Yerevan Kiosk and the Summer Pavilion. We'll just have a few glimpses of these. And then make our way out of Top Carpi by retracing the route we came in. When we have left Top Carpi, we will make our way a couple of hundred yards, or meters if you prefer, back to the street along which the trams run. We will then have a look inside the little mosque near the tram stop, which we have walked past several times. I don't think that it is on the tourist trail. It is a small working mosque which is used by the people who live or work in this area. After finding my way in, with guidance from a local young chap, I took some basic shots. After a few minutes, it became apparent that there was a service due to start, and I said to my guide that I was about to pack up and leave. My guide said that if I stayed, I would be able to video the service. Well, I didn't need asking twice and stayed, knowing that I was welcome. This episode may have some relevance when you find out what happened to me when I tried to do some filming in a church which I came across in the next part of this turkey series. So, the rest of this episode is a record of my visit to this mosque.